Julia, you just mentioned that there are different kinds of requests that are branded as right to be forgotten uh, claims. Uh, at the end of 2014, the Brazilian Constitutional Supreme Court um, announced that it would decide the two right to be forgotten cases. Um, both cases were requests uh, to television stations um, not to broadcast TV sp specials about famous crimes occurred decades ago. Uh, the claims stated that those facts were not relevant anymore and that it would only hurt uh, the dignity of those people involved. Uh, in the first one, the family of the victim claimed that the exposure was baseless and th that the case was not relevant anymore. In the second one, uh, the defendant was uh, acquitted, and uh, which based his claim that the re-exposure could um, cause him an unjustified harm. Uh, there are... Um, were also arguments uh, making parallels with the logic of the criminal justice system uh, in which after a person is freed of charges or after a period of time following certain charges or a crime, uh, their records are clean and the, their past is no longer considered relevant to the justice system. Uh, however, those cases uh, do not involve the internet environment, uh, even if some new sources do not uh, make this distinction. Uh, is there a difference between claims to be forgotten online and offline? Right, so um, this is really interesting. Separately, across the planet, um, countries with a civilian um, law tradition have developed out of um, personality rights, dignity and um, intimate intimacy and so on, uh, these cases about what they call, I think it's droit d'oubli, it first came in France, right to oblivion here, um, and that's what these two cases, the, the global cases I think you're referring to, are, are about. They, um, they are as they've, they're of separate legal origin, which is interesting, to the Costea case we've been talking about. The Costea case comes out of um, data protection rights to rectification um, uh, and to erasure, which are part of data protection laws. More than 100 countries in the world have them. Uh, Brazil may at some point uh, have them. You have some of those rights, but probably not a strong rectification right. So that's statutory based. And this is um, constitutional law or other basis in rights of dignity. Um, I don't think, I think so if they're in theory, you could have those rights that apply equally to both the offline and online domain, whether it's case law origin or statutory origin. Um, so I don't think there's a distinction there. There is a distinction in terms of what the, um, how extensive the um, data erasure is. So what the intention of the um, online search engine specifically requests is, is to I introduce an element of, obscur of ob ob obfuscation and obscurity to that in information. It remains as ever in the public record, but it's about the continued um, prominence of information. These requests, as I understand it, are for that information not to be um, again given uh, some presence in an original source. And uh, the cases uh, which were decided actually align the, the STJ decisions that these are, that are now being appealed seem to align with my experience of other countries, which is, that for example, a gentleman who was um, charged with a particular crime that now they're revisiting and acquitted of that crime uh, s sought not to be requested, uh, not to be mentioned in the story, and then when he was, he um, sought compensation. And he was successful in the STJ. I would expect him to be successful in the Constitutional Court because that story didn't need him. And he had no, um, he had every legal right not to be mentioned. He was not, not a, um, uh, at all involved in the proceedings after, after that point. The other case is, again, and it's quite similar, this is a Cooney case, it's quite similar to cases in other jurisdictions, which is the estate of an individual. And there it's, um, it's a different scenario because the individual was, has, was the victim who, who was killed in a um, crime uh, and it's the family not wanting to revisit that information. And this is kind of gives an example of some of the overreach people are concerned about. Some requests, for example, of a, a couple that divorce and the proceedings, which are very controversial, maybe they don't want their children to see. So they're worried about a particular audience, but then they have this wide reach. There are ways you can deal with this. So, for example, criminal and divorce cases often don't get indexed. You put robots.txt on the information. Then you don't need to remove it. You just stop its proliferation. Um, I think that the Cooney case is 
like in the SDJ, it was rejected. I think it's probably likely to be rejected in the Constitutional Court. The interesting question will be whether the court, um, conscious of the debates about um, this other brand of delisting rights and the popular um, conceptions of the right to be forgotten, seeks to make particular distinctions in that vein. Um, because there is a, they may start to get into the debates and maybe the media will be very conscious in, um, and global will be conscious of representing the very public interest style arguments. But I think that particularly for the gentleman who was acquitted, that is a core um, uh, right to oblivion case. Of course, you can't remove the news reports from 30 years ago, but you can stop news stories that continue to harm somebody who really wants to just move on with their life and has every reason um, to do so.